how are you? Um, I'm back. My name is Elizabeth, and I am Silver Scissor. Um, Silver Scissor shows it on Instagram, and I think it's just called the Silver Scissor here. Uh, and I am going to tell you about my cross-stitching and kind of what's been going on. Um, first of all, um, thank you to uh, Java Girl Stitches. If you haven't seen that one, go see that one. Um, she And thank you for the shout-out from her. Um, she's got a lot of fun things that she's stitching and some fun finishes. Um, it's been a little longer than usual. I'm trying to do every other week, and I'm trying to do like Tuesday or Wednesday, but I think my best day to do it is Sunday, even though my all of my kids are home and um, running around and being loud and getting into everything, but I just seem like, I don't know, Sunday, it just seems easier to me. And if there's problems I can have, my husband helps with the tripod, and I told you about my my tripod drama last time. So, anyway, I, I may try to do it on some days. I don't know. I'll, I've got to see what works best. Um, but it is good to be back. I haven't done a ton. I've done a lot of stitching, but more on one specific thing than on a lot, which I will show you, and I'm waving around a pattern. But, so I will show you. Um, I'm up in my bedroom again today because my family is all home, and they're very loud. So we have just a boring wall behind us. I need to get our bedroom decorated, but I haven't. As I said, have said before, we just remodeled our house, and I got the main areas done first. I put my husband and I have been working on shelves in our laundry room. which So we have a two-story house with a basement, and our old laundry room was in our basement. But all the bedrooms are on the second floor. So when we did the remodel, we wanted to add the laundry room bring it up by the bedrooms because we're hauling clothes down two flights of stairs every single time we have to do the laundry and it's not very fun and it doesn't really motivate me to t it just really did not make me want to do laundry and I mean I already don't want to do laundry so having it two floors away was not very inspiring to me um and then that laundry room was also kind of like a dungeon because our house was built our house was built in the 70s and it had not been updated at all since then. I don't think. We have this awful linoleum floor. For whatever reason, there's a drain in the middle of the floor. I know they have to have a drain in the basement somewhere, but why it's in the middle of the laundry room floor, I don't really understand. It is now my sewing room, and it's kind of like a dungeon still, and I'm hoping one day we can make that seem like a, a better area. We have my sewing machine, and there is a big counter, and it really, when we moved it, or when we were looking at the house to move, it was one of the things that I was was excited about. Was I had this sewing room and I had this. It has this huge counter in it and like a built-in desk and stuff for my sewing machine. But it's kind of like a dungeon in there. I mean, it's not. the The linoleum is like peeling up because it's old. It really needs to be redone. And that was one of the areas that we did not do when we did the other remodel because we were doing the kitchen remodel and. We added on this bedroom that we're in and the laundry room and another bedroom at this time that we did it. And so that laundry room is now our, we have an extra fridge and freezer, like a deep freeze in there. And anyway, it's kind of dungeon-like. But now we have this other laundry room that is light and bright. And um, my husband, I had him build some shelves for it. And I stained them the color that I wanted. And he, all he really did was cut the wood and we put them on those pipes that you, you've seen people have. Um, and so, and he was like, why are we decorating the laundry room? Nobody uses, or nobody stays it in here but us. And I was like, well, first of all, we need it to be motivating. So I'm going to want to come in and see, like, I want to go into a nice looking laundry room and maybe that will motivate me to actually fold the clothes once they're washed. Because I can put them in the washer and move them to the dryer, but I can't, but then I have to, you know, beg myself to, to fold them. But maybe if it's cute in there, I'll want to fold them more because I want to be in a cute room, right? Um, and anyway, so we built the shelves in there. And then I've, been, I've put some decorations on them. I'm not finished. But when I am, I'll show you guys. And uh, and I made a cross stitch for them, but it's at the framers right now. And I, I finished it earlier this week. It only took me like two days. It's little. And I it's being framed right now. Um, and I hopefully will have that to show you next time because it's, I think it's cute. Anyway. Um, but, so he couldn't figure out why I was doing it, and, but then, 
think it was like Thursday or Friday, he came in and he said, all right, I really like going in there now that it looks like it's a finished room instead of just a, a blank wall, boring room. So my plan totally worked. And he sees it my way. He always, it always is kind of like that, but he doesn't necessarily see it my way or where my vision is with this, with whatever my idea is. But anyway, we have a little bit more things that we have got to do to our house. We got a new dryer in January and we had, we'd bought a washer before, a couple months before, and then our, we had to get a new dryer. And the delivery guy, so deliver, the delivery guy, he only sent one, and he was bringing it up the stairs on the dolly, and my husband and I were standing like right at the, kind of at the top of the stairs, there's a railing there, and we were behind the railing, and, and um, I heard my husband gasp, and I look over, and the guy dropped the washer halfway down, our, or the dryer, halfway down our stairs to the floor. So he was halfway up when he dropped it. So we had put in LVP, so luxury vinyl plank. So it looks like wood, but it's kind of, it's made out of like the same stuff as linoleum, but it's in planks. But I've left it because I can steam mop it. And um, it dented um, that, and it took a big chunk out of our wall, and loosened the banister, and so we've got to get all of that replaced. And um, our insur the insurance for it, the, the company that, so that we bought the washer, the washer and dryer from, they are the ones that um, paid, their insurance paid for it. And we've got, we just had some money come through, so now we can, we can get moving on that. But, so we will be living in construction again soon. Uh, we've got to get that fixed and we've got to get the flooring. And it's an interlocking floor and it's throughout our whole main floor. So it's in our formal living room, our kitchen and dining areas, and in our family room and a bath. No, it's not in the bathroom. Anyway, so we've got to have that taken out. We don't know if it, they can replace just the planks and the place that we bought the flooring from. Um, we, it's gone out of business and my husband has called several times to try and get them to talk to them, we need, um, we have stairs that go down to a sunken family room, and we've got to replace a little thing that was probably from one of my kids. There's a little thing in that, too. And he's tried to call to get just the slats we need, and then also the, the end cap thing that goes on the stair, and he can't get him to call us back. So the flooring is out there, but we cannot figure out where to buy the little end stair ledge thing. I don't, I have no idea what it's called. So, anyway, that is what has been going on there. We did have spring gr spring break. Um, we went, I went with my brother and sister-in-law and their kids and my kids, and, and we went to a farm called Wheeler Farm, and it's down, it's in Salt Lake, kind of in the middle, but just in the middle of the city is this farm, and you can go walk through, it's, I think it's just owned by Salt Lake County. And they have different animals, and it's free to just go walk around. But we decided we wanted to take this home tour. Of, they have, like, the original farmhouse there. So we went into that, and it was really interesting, and it was fun to see. I love going in old homes. I love houses. I could go through model homes every single day and go around through all of the parade of homes, and I love to get decorating ideas from those. Um, but I, I just love houses, so I like to go see them. Um, and... Um, so we took a tour of this farmhouse, and it was really fun. We, um, I didn't realize the difference between the parlor and the sitting room. So they talked about, the, you know, they'd go into the parlor after dinner, when they would have dinner parties, and the men would stay in the parlor, and they would talk about politics and farming. But it, the women weren't supposed to talk about, or it was rude for the men to talk about politics in front of the women because they couldn't vote. So the women would close the door on the to the sitting room and they would go in there and um, they would sit and stitch together. So they had several things displayed. Of th there was lace that they had um, that they had made and they had like a little thing that had like nail things in it and they would do, I have no idea how to do it, but anyway, they were telling us they had, uh, they would work on embroidery or cross stitch or whatever or quilting and they would sit and chat while they did it and that they believed that um, your hands shouldn't be idle. So whenever you were sitting and chatting with someone, you would have something to do with your hands, which I, of course, have to tell my husband. My husband and my brother stayed out 
of the house with our kids and my sister-in-law and I went through and um, and anyway I always am telling my husband because he's like can't you just sit like if we're watching a movie or something he's like, can't you just sit and watch and it's I can't I don't I, I don't know what it is but I just I have to be doing something or else I'm not being productive right so anyway it was good to hear them talk about that because I feel the exact same way that when I'm sitting there listening, I should be doing something, like stitching. So anyway, we, I've been working, I've done a few different types of things since I last showed you. One of the things I've been doing is making hair bows for my girls. And I bought, so I bought this one and some others that are very similar. And I was trying to, so I've been working on how to make them. I think this is super cute. It's made out of fabric and it was like a, I think it's a long strip of fabric. Fabric. I cannot find an exact tutorial for it. But um, so if anybody knows, the person that made this calls it. So I bought it from calls it their pinwheel style bow. And I've looked up pinwheel style bows like on Pinterest and whatever to find a tutorial, and I can't find anything like that. But from what I think, this is tied. I can tell by the back. Um, it looks like it was like a strip of fabric, and then they tied it. So I have been doing those. I do have, so I made some of them, and I think they turned out cute, but I would like them a little bit tighter. If you compare the two, this one, the knot is super tight, but I can't figure out, when I pull it that tight, I feel like it kind of goes like a wampus looking around there, and I can't figure it out. So if anybody has tips for me, I would appreciate it. But I made several of these for my girl's hair. My kids, I told you guys before that my kids are adopted, and so we have very different hair. My hair is naturally very, very straight. I have to put gel and whatever else in it to get it to stay. Um, but my daughter, my, my older daughter is half black. And so her hair is super curly, ringlet. It's beautiful. I would love that hair for me, but sadly, I don't have it. And uh, I have zero curls. But um, so it's been fun as we've experimented with her hair. And then my second daughter is full Hispanic, and so she's got kind of wavy hair, but it is a lot, my hair's super fine. Her hair is, as she's getting older, she, well, she's five, but her hair is definitely more textured than mine is. It's more, more coarse than mine is, and so her hair stays so well. But anyway, so I've got, I love to uh, do their hair and have them look presentable in public. Um, <laughs> So anyway, so I've been making bows and it's fun. But my daughter, my older daughter, with the super curly hair, she, I feel like, has to have bigger things in her hair because her hair is so curly. If she just has a little one, you won't even notice it. And then my, um, but my other daughter, and she's smaller too, she can handle the little ones. But my older daughter, I like bigger things because her hair is definitely has more volume than mine. But So this is another one, and I actually... I have made these bows, this style, and this is just a, this is called the Sydney Sailor Bow, and there's a free pattern for it on the Made for Mermaids website. And I had made one that was like this, but in this style, I should have gotten it out. And I like these ones, but I kind of like this tied look better at the moment, I'm preferring this one. So anyway, I used some of the leftover to do this, and this one I was able to do a little bit tighter without having it go funny than I was these other ones. And I had heard, somebody had told me to use, uh, you know, the, I don't know, the glue dots, I guess they're called, for scrapbooking to hold these. And I feel like they do not hold as well as a, a glue gun. Anyway, but if anybody can figure out how to tie these tighter without having this go squampus, I would love to know. So this is a little strawberry one. My daughter picked out the fabric for that, my five-year-old. And then this one. But I've got to still keep practicing because, like I said, I want to figure out how to do them tighter like this. Or if anybody knows where a free tutorial tutorial for them is, I would love to see it. Um, anyway, so uh, the other thing that I have done, and I showed you some signs before, but my friend and I went to the sign place again, and we took our daughters that are 10. She has a daughter that's the same age as my little girl, and they will both be 10 in the next few weeks here. And so we took them, and they could make they made one for their room. And then I made some while I was sitting there helping her. So I made this one, this little Easter one with 
Stunning stamp and it says Cottontail Trading Co. I don't have very many Easter decorations, so I thought this was a good one. And then I also made this last one. So this I really like. I haven't done this darker gray in the background, and I love it. Um, this is probably my favorite one that I've done, even though it's just small and simple. But um, I have another one. Both of us have finds that we have bought in the past there, and we messed them up. And so <laughs> we have to go back and do them. I tried to do mine at home, and I messed up my vinyl on it and have to redo it. And then she uh, put Mod Podge over the top to kind of fill in the paint. And she thought it was dry because it felt dry to the touch, but it smeared it when she put it on. So we've got to go back in the near future and do it. And there's a few more, of course, that I want to make. So um, I told you I've been working on mostly two different two different ones. Um, this one, I've hardly worked on this at all. But this is um, Frag J by With Thy Needle. And it's this one that I've been sitting here with in my hand, working it around the whole time. So I am doing some color changes, and they are shepherd bush, shepherd bush color changes. Um, but that is what it will be. And this, you probably can't tell what it is. This is her arm of her little shirt that's under her jumper. And there's a little waistband in here. I don't think you can see it. It kind of blends in. So I may pull that out and do, um, I don't know, a red or something that will stand out. This little waistband, we'll have to see when it's all done. But the light blue is not showing up on mine. And I think it's just my dye lot because I went back after I had stitched it to Shepherd's Bush and theirs stands out a lot better than mine does and it's the same colors. And so I think it's just mine, but I may go and do and pull that out, so we'll see. Anyway, and then this is just the sheet right here. Um, and then I worked on the one that I was telling you about the framers, and hopefully that will be done. They said the 22nd. So hopefully that will will be done by then. Um, and then the other one that I have been working on the hardest is this. Um, I had planned uh, that I would just go until it's done because there's people standing right here in a tree and then I just need to do this border. I thought I'm going to pick this flag because I changed. It calls for Calico Kitty. And it's a little bit pinky. I don't know if you can see it. It it looks okay in the flag, but when I started, it's the same color over here. And when I started to do this, it kind of looked like it was a more pinky. So I changed it to Ruby Slipper. But I haven't unfixed this yet. And I need to do that and then also do the white on it. And then there's a third flag over here that goes with it. Um, and then I'll be done. So really, I don't have that much left on it, but it is so much filling in. And I tried to do the sewing method on it, and it really was faster. I've never done stitched without a hoop before. But my stitches did do not look as nice. And I know some people are doing it, and they look nice, and I have got to keep practicing because it didn't look good with it. So I have to unpick those and, and do it again. Um, I'm trying to decide how to finish because I have other 4th of July ones that I want to do. And this one, it's 4th of July, but after all this work, it is for sure staying up permanently in my house. It is not going down when I take my other 4th of July stuff down. Um, but I, I'm trying to decide how to do it because I'm getting so tired of the graph. This, I stitched on last Saturday. I stitched this little area between the two windows in a loop done on. Anyway, it took forever. I thought, it's not that much. It's not going to take that long. It took over two hours to get that done. And I only did that because I just wanted it done. And I think it kind of burned me out, which is why I started doing the sheet and why I took the break this week to do the other. But I thought, too, okay, maybe I can do just one fence and grass section each day. And when I have that done, it'll seem like, I mean, the people over here in the flowers, they don't seem very big. So maybe once I got all of that done, it would seem like I had almost nothing left to do. If I just do those little things, the grass things, for the rest of the, like once a day, maybe I can get it done. But this May is definitely, this is what I'm going to be working on for Stitch Mania. I'm not going to do something else because I can't handle any new start, any more new starts. I'm trying to whittle them down so that I only have two or three left to go. And um, 
but I don't I don't want I don't like to have a ton of stars. It kind of stresses me out. So anyway, that's my plan. I'll finish this eventually, hopefully by the end of May, because like I said, my stitch mania plan. Um, I went yesterday, I was in Salt Lake for something else, and I usually go to Shepherd's Bush. Um, they they are closer to my house, but there's another one called the uh, Craft, Center, Craft Center of Fine Stitchery that is in Salt Lake, and I was in Salt Lake anyway yesterday, and so I stopped by because I was running out of, this is antique lace, the, the white in the front, and I'm running out of it, so I needed some more. So I stopped by, and they happened to have, I haven't been in there for a year, and they happened to have a model of this on the wall. And I have never seen this one fully done in real life, only on Instagram. And so it was fun to see it, and I looked at it, and I thought, okay, I really don't have that much work to do, especially comparat comparatively speaking. I just need to buckle down and do it. But, um, and they also didn't do all the words down here. They changed the phrase to something, and it's just one line and where this is three lines. But, um, and I'm going to do the whole thing, but anyway, it was fun to see it, and it helped me think, okay, I really can do this. It's not that big of a deal. I'm almost done. I just need to keep going. Um, but having the house done feels great. Um, they also had their uh, uh, model of the Heritage Sampler, and I've also never seen that one fully done. I know Shepherd's Bush had it for a while, but I never saw it while it was there. Um, and I think it, I don't know if it, whose it was or why it was there, but it was kind of before I discovered Shepherd's Bush. Um, I told you guys I had, I had stitched for, like I started when I was probably about eight, and I stitched for a long, long time. And then um, I got into quilting. And then last year, I had gone, because I wanted my daughter that's almost 10, is really starting to like to sew and do craft things like that and um so i was looking for stamped cross stitch and so i went up there i can't remember how i had even heard of shepherd's bush and um they had the stamped cross stitch kits and as i was looking around i thought oh my heck i forgot how much i love this and i had actually gone into the craft center of fine stitchery first looking for them and they didn't have them but looking at the models on the wall the same thing i was like oh my gosh i forgot how much i love to do this and so We've been going strong ever since. But um, anyway, and so when they had the Heritage Sampler out, that was more, or it was inspiring to see that too because I've got a little bit done. On, well, I've got the boat done and George Washington, and then I've got the little square with the snake. I don't like snakes, but I did it anyway. Um, anyway, it's, they've got that one done. Um, so it was fun to see those. It's fun to see... Like, I feel like anything I could ever want, um, Shepherd's Bush has, and if they don't have it, I can order it from them, and they'll order it in for me. But it is fun to go to into other stores and see the different models that they have. Um, I also bought, they had, they had the model of this, which is Plum Street, the Adams Family, on the wall. And um, I had seen this just 